Hi everybody, this is Anne. Lately, Jim's been on a search for the perfect homemade bread. He didn't like the size of the generic bread pans that we had and asked if I'd make a slightly larger one. In this video, I'll hand build a bread pan. I'll give you my templates for free. Then, Jim will test out the pan by showing you how to make his favorite bread. I started by referencing the standard size bread pan that Jim said was too small and took all the measurements. I know my clay shrinks 14%, so I used my shrink ruler and enlarged the measurements accordingly. I modernized the design a bit and cut out the template pieces. I rolled out the clay to a quarter inch thick in between two rulers. When making your own bread pan, check with your clay manufacturer to see if your clay is suitable for bakeware. Starting with the rim template, I laid it flat on the clay and cut the outer edge with an X-Acto knife. On the inner edge, I only scored a line with my needle tool. I did not cut all the way through yet. I was afraid cutting that extra bulk away would speed up the drying process of the thinner clay, making it too dry and unusable. I removed the template and the excess clay. With a damp sponge, I wet, softened, and rounded the edge of the clay. I then went around the outer edge with my finger, rounding the clay more and cleaning it up a bit. I also undercut the bottom part of the rim with my fingernail. I continued to cut the rest of the pattern pieces using the X-Acto knife. I cut two of the shorter side pieces. I also cut two of the longer side pieces in the bottom. I let those pieces dry until they were a stiff leather hard. I used the 45 degree side of my beveling tool to pre-cut my edges before attaching them. I set aside the rim template piece, then cut all the sides of the other clay slabs except the edges that would become the rim of the pan. A good tip is to save all your trimmings to use later. I sponged them down a bit as they were getting a little dry. Back to the rim clay template, I cut the inner clay away using an X-Acto knife, then removed it. I used a damp sponge to round off and soften the edges. Using my scoring tool, I scored the edges of two of the sides and the bottom piece, then slipped them. Now I can pull the side pieces up and attach them. As the clay is leather hard, the rigidity will help the pieces to stand straight without collapsing. Once those pieces were attached, I wet some of the bevel cuttings and worked them into each seam really well. I also worked the back edges together, making sure I had a good tight seal, but softening the corner a bit so it won't be too sharp. I slipped the other two sides and connected them to the bottom edge like the first two sides, making sure to seal the seams with the bevel cuttings and sealing the outer edges.
Using a sponge, I dampened and softened the upper rim. I scored the top of it really well. I also scored the inner edge of my top rim template piece. I turned over the template piece and attached the two together. I lined up the two along the edge, then really worked the pieces tightly together. I used my sponge to soften and add more pressure to the joint. I used a brush and wet the clay underneath the outer seam area. Using another of the bevel trimmings, I placed it along the seam and worked it in to seal the seam while at the same time adjusting that rim piece so the edges slant upward slightly for pleasing lines. I went around the inner edge, rounding it and working the clay down and together for a nice gentle slope downward. Plus, I wanted to work the clay on the edge of the rim into the pan to make it seamless. I went around the piece one more time, checking to make sure my rim slope was even on all sides and that my lines were straight. I let it dry slowly to keep it from warping. Now here's the bread pan I made earlier that I painted with bees. If you want to learn how to paint the bees, I have a video for that. Check out the link above. Now I'm really happy with how this came out. I'll turn it over to Jim now to share with you his bread recipe. Hello, this is Jim. I want to share with you our Little Street Pottery bread recipe. This recipe is a conglomeration of recipes that I've experimented with to try to create a bread that is more wholesome and hearty and large enough for my sandwiches. I like to start with a good organic bread flour, like this one, one that's free of all the chemicals that we like to spray on our wheat here in the United States. The ingredients for this bread are specific to the bread pan and made in this video and can be found in the description below. I start with about one and a half cups of slightly warm water, about 90 degrees, and add in a tablespoon of the instant yeast. I like to stir that up a little bit and let the yeast do its thing in the warm water. I let this kind of marinate for five to 10 minutes and let the yeast bloom a little bit before adding the next set of ingredients. And then we pour in our three and a half cups of uh, the bread flour along with one and a half teaspoons of salt. Then I'll add a tablespoon of oil uh, you can use most any oil. I like to use avocado oil. It's not as uh, funky as some of those seed oils. And then you just get to mixing. Now when it's all clumped together and it's able to kind of hold itself together, you pour it out and then you start doing the kneading. Because I'm doing the videography on this and I'm making Anne do all the hard work, it looks to me like she's trying to use a ram's head wedging technique on the dough. What can I say? The woman's got pottery in her blood usually takes about five to eight minutes of this uh, kneading or wedging and then I like to let it rest for a few minutes because it's tired from all of that. Next I like to take it and start to spread it out a little bit, begin to shape it a little bit. So we're going to stretch it out and then we're going to ultimately reform it into a ball shape. Once you have it into a nice little bouncy ball, I like to stick it in a bowl and uh, sprinkle a little flour on top. And then what I do is I just cover it and let it rise for about an hour. And let's see, yes, it's risen quite nicely. And sometimes you might need a little help kind of wedging it off the sides there. It should pour pretty much right out of the bowl and then we can continue to shape it. Again, we're gonna stretch it out a little bit and once we've stretched it out, we're going to fold it back into itself and ultimately reshape it into that ball shape.
Once I form it into a little ball again, I let it rest for about 15 minutes, just enough time to watch Anne's latest pottery video. All right, now we're coming to the home stretch. Again, you're gonna sprinkle a little flour on there so you can easily manipulate it. This time again, we're gonna stretch it all the way out. And we're going to elongate it a little bit, make it look a little bit like a football. Here we go, there it is, beautiful. And now we're going to fold it up. We're gonna kind of fold one end over the other, a little bit of a triangular shape, and then we're gonna stretch it back out so that we're gonna be able to roll this thing up. And you wanna think about the wide end of that triangle down there as kind of being the same length as your bread pan. So that's why she's stretching it out like that, and I'm behind the camera yelling, stretch it out, stretch it out. And now she's gonna begin rolling it up, like a big old cigar, if that's what you like to smoke. Anyways, you wanna again roll it up, make it kinda of tight, put a little tension in there. You just wanna be sure that it's gonna be able to hold itself together. Now when we flip this over and take a look at the bottom, you wanna be able to seal the seams down there, just like you do with pottery, except in this case you don't have to slip and score, you can just kinda of tuck it together. And now we're gonna add a little more flour just so we can put the final touches on this. And you're gonna kinda of compress the ends a little bit. You wanna put a little flour on the ends. And you wanna give it a little doink on the end so that um, it holds it together. There it is, doink, doink, doink. And again, that end, doink it a little bit. And there you go. As Clay Bottoms would say, you got a beautiful thing there. Of course, now you pull out your bread pan that you just made from watching the first part of this video, and you make sure it's buttered or oiled, whatever you like to use as the resist on the side here. Throw your loaf in there, cover it for an hour, and it should rise up nicely, just like this one has. You're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 400 degrees and put it in there, and uh, now I use convection mode on the oven, which uh, doesn't take quite as long. It takes about 25 minutes for me to cook this loaf of bread. It could take up to 40 minutes on a conventional oven. You just wanna make sure it's about 190 degrees on the inside, and that way you know it's done. It won't be gooey, but there it is, it's beautiful. And I love this bread because it just pops right out and it's a little bit bigger than regular sandwich bread. I like to cut nice thick slices for my sandwiches. I like to coat the top of the bread with some butter right out of the oven like that. It kind of keeps it soft and delicious. And there it is, a beautiful loaf of bread, extra large slices for your sandwiches, pesticide free and super low gluten. Enjoy. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.